Hey everyone, I'm Clara. Before I dive into my story, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more tales like mine. Here we go. It was just another evening in what I thought was our shared home, when Mark, my brother, decided to drop the bomb. We were in the living room, him sprawled on the couch with his laptop, the glow highlighting that smug look I knew all too well. You really should start thinking about your life, Clara. I mean, look at you, nearly 40, and not a single thing to show for it. I tried to keep my cool, focusing on my tea. I have things to show for it, Mark. Things that matter to me. My art. My friends. Mark scoffed, cutting me off. Art? Friends? You can't seriously think that's enough. You need to make something of yourself. I need to surround myself with people who add value. You... You're just dead weight. The words stung, but they weren't anything new. I sighed, setting down my mug. So, what do you suggest, Mark? His response was cold, calculated. It's time you moved out, Clara. I'm taking bigger risks in the market now, and I can't have distractions. I need space for people who understand the stakes. Distractions? Is that what I am to you? My voice was steadier than I felt. He didn't even look up from his screen. Exactly. You need to leave. End of this month. I stood up, my chair scraping back loudly. Fine. If that's how little I mean to you, I don't want to stay a minute longer than I need to. As the days ticked by, packing boxes became my routine. Mark was never around, always out flaunting his new wealth. I moved my things into a small studio apartment, smaller but mine, filled with light and lined with my paintings. It was a breath of fresh air away from Mark's shadow. The day I handed over the keys, Mark was unusually home, lounging as if he'd won some grand prize. Finally, he muttered, not even bothering to look at me. You're doing something right by leaving. I didn't bother with a response. Closing that door behind me felt like shedding a skin, one that was suffocating and worn out. Little did I know, as I walked away, Mark's so-called empire of stocks was about to crumble, and the schadenfreude awaiting me was more satisfying than any parting shot I could have delivered. Stay tuned for what happens next. Remember... Like and subscribe for the continuation of this wild ride. Thanks for listening. Months passed since I moved out, and the buzz about Mark's so-called genius in stocks was impossible to ignore. He was the talk of the town, splashing his cash at high-end spots, a regular feature on local blogs, always with a different crowd, flashing his latest watch or car. It seemed like he had it all figured out. You seeing this, Clara? Jessie, one of my closest friends, waved her phone in front of me one afternoon as we sat in my new sunlit studio. On the screen was a photo of Mark at some gala, grinning wide. Your brother's living the high life. Makes me wonder about stocks, too. I shook my head, dipping my brush into a swirl of paint. It's all a show, Jesse. That's how he wants everyone to see him. But trust me, it's never that simple. As the weeks rolled on, Mark's appetite for risk grew. The whispers started changing tune. I heard it first from Eric, a mutual friend who used to invest on Mark's advice. He's pushing too hard, Clara, betting big on stuff that's way too volatile. I'm pulling out before this ship sinks, Eric confessed over coffee one dreary morning. I merely sipped my latte, a knot forming in my stomach. I hope he knows what he's doing. But as fate would have it, he didn't. The market turned brutal, stocks plunging like stones in water, and Mark was caught in the riptide. His so-called empire began to crumble under the weight of bad decisions and massive debt. The day it all came crashing down was oddly sunny. Jessie rushed into my studio, out of breath, her eyes wide with a mix of concern and disbelief. It's Mark, Clara. He's lost everything. The stock's tanked, and he's overleveraged. People are saying he's in deep, like 50,000 deep or more. Sitting back, I let the news sink in. It was a mix of shock and, I admit, a vindictive sense of justice. Mark had thrown me out, thinking he'd never face a day like this. Yet here it was, fate's cruel twist. He came by my place earlier, Jessie continued, her voice dropping to a whisper. He looked broken, Clara. Never thought I'd see him like that. He's ruined. Part of me wanted to feel sorry for him, the brother I once knew. But that part was drowned out by the memories of his scorn and arrogance. This was his doing his choices leading him here. As Jesse left, I stood by my window, looking out at the city that had seen my lowest and was witnessing my rise. 
It felt like the beginning of a new chapter, not just for me, but for Mark too, though his would be a far tougher one to navigate. The downfall of a man who thought he was untouchable, brought down not by enemies, but by his own hubris. There was a lesson there, one I hoped he'd learn as he picked up the pieces of his shattered illusions. Life has a funny way of showing us new paths, just when we think all roads are closed. After Mark's downfall, I took it as a sign to really start over, to build something for myself that no one could take away or belittle. I moved into a vibrant community on the other side of town, far from the shadow of my old life. It was a neighborhood filled with artists, small cafe owners, and young entrepreneurs. The energy was contagious, and for the first time in a long while, I felt excited about the possibilities. One morning, as I set up my new art studio, Linda, the owner of the cafe next door, popped her head in. Hey, Clara, love what you're doing with the place. If you ever want to display some of your work at my shop, just let me know. We could use some local art on the walls. Grateful, I accepted her offer. That would be amazing, Linda. Thank you. I'd love to bring some color to your space. As weeks turned into months, my connections in the community deepened. I hosted small art classes, participated in local markets, and even started selling some of my pieces. It was during one of these markets that I met Tom, a local craftsman. Clara, your work really captures the spirit of our community, Tom noted as he examined one of my paintings. Ever thought about expanding? Maybe some collaborative pieces? His words sparked an idea, and soon we were planning a joint project that combined his woodworking skills with my paintings. It was exhilarating to create and be appreciated not just for my art, but for who I was as a person, independent of any familial ties or past shadows. One evening, as I was closing up the studio, Eric stopped by. His face was somber, a stark contrast to the usual cheerful greeting. I heard more about Mark, he said quietly. He's not just broke, Clara. He owes a lot of money to some very angry people. Creditors, former business partners, even friends. They're all turning on him. It's bad. I paused, processing the gravity of Mark's situation. I guess he's getting a harsh dose of reality now, huh? Yeah, and it's not looking like he'll climb out of this one easily. He's practically a pariah in the circles he used to flaunt himself in, Eric replied, his tone mixed with pity and disapproval. The news should have made me feel vindicated, but instead, there was a twinge of sadness. Mark had chosen his path, and now he was facing the consequences alone. Meanwhile, I was building a new life, one filled with genuine relationships and personal fulfillment. That night, as I lay in bed, I realized how far I'd come. From being ousted from my own home to finding a new community that embraced me, my journey was a testament to resilience and the power of new beginnings. The contrast between my thriving new world and Mark's crumbling empire was stark, and in that contrast, I found not only peace, but a deep sense of gratitude for the twists and turns that led me here. It was a chilly morning when Mark showed up at my studio, a shadow of his former self. His coat was threadbare, and his eyes, once so full of arrogance, now held a desperate, almost pleading light. Clara, he began, his voice shaky. I've been thinking a lot about what happened. About everything. I'm sorry. I was wrong. The words hung in the air, heavy and unexpected. I paused, my brush in midair, not quite ready to meet his gaze. Sorry? Just like that, you're sorry? I finally said, setting my brush down. Why now, Mark? Because you've lost everything and have nowhere else to turn? He shuffled uncomfortably. I know I've made mistakes. Terrible ones. And I need help, Clara. I'm drowning here. I took a deep breath, the anger and old wounds bubbling up. You kicked me out when you thought you were on top of the world, Mark. You made it clear I was dead weight. And now that you're down, you want what? Forgiveness? Help? He nodded, looking down. Yes, I... I guess I do. I don't have anyone else. There was a long silence as I considered his words, the years of hurt, and the new life I had built from his betrayal. Mark, you're coming here, asking for help. I get that you're desperate. But you need to understand something, I began, my voice firm but not unkind. What's happening to you now? It's not just bad luck. It's the result of your choices, your actions. You chose to belittle me, to throw me out, to use people. 
and now fate has given you a chance to see how that feels. Mark looked up, pain etched across his face. So what are you saying? I'm saying I accept your apology because I need to move on. But forgiving you doesn't mean I will fix your problems. You need to do that yourself. It's the only way you'll learn and hopefully find a better path, I replied, the weight of my decision settling in my heart. He stood there a moment longer, as if waiting for more. When it was clear nothing else was coming, he nodded slowly. I hope you find your way, Mark. I really do, I added, as he turned to leave, his figure retreating into the cool morning mist. As the door closed behind him, a sense of closure washed over me. This confrontation wasn't just about rejecting his apology. It was a reaffirmation of my own strength and the new life I had courageously carved out for myself. In standing my ground, I had not only protected my peace, but also offered him a tough love lesson in humility and responsibility. As the seasons changed, so did the fortunes of Mark and myself, each of us navigating the consequences of our past decisions. His continued spiral into chaos was whispered about in the cafes and on the streets. Mark's debts mounted, and one by one his so-called friends turned their backs. Legal troubles began to pile up as creditors took action to reclaim what was owed. Meanwhile, my life in the new community flourished. The art studio became a local favorite, a hub of creativity and warmth. Linda's cafe displayed my paintings, and with Tom's collaboration, our joint artwork became a symbol of what could be achieved through unity and mutual respect. The studio wasn't just a place for art. It was a sanctuary for the broken, a beacon for the lost. One evening, as I locked up the studio, I paused to look at the vibrant street life outside. Children played near the fountain, couples wandered through the market stalls, and laughter filled the air. This community had embraced me, and in return, I poured my soul into it. Reflecting on my journey, I realized that being forced out of my old life by Mark was the catalyst for discovering my true self. What once felt like the worst day of my life had set me on a path to fulfillment and genuine happiness. The irony was not lost on me. Mark intended to discard me, yet that very act propelled me into a life far richer than I had ever imagined. As night fell and the streetlights cast a soft glow over the cobblestones, I thought about Mark. Our last encounter had been a crossroads not just for him, but for me as well. I hoped, somewhere in his struggle, he found a moment of clarity and redemption, though I knew I would not be the one to guide him there. The future was now something I looked forward to with anticipation, not fear. My life was truly my own, crafted by my hands and heart, surrounded by those who valued me not for what I could give them, but for who I was. And as for Mark, his fate was his own to shape. Perhaps, in his fall from grace, he would find a humble new beginning, just as I had found profound strength in my rise from the ashes. And so, as I turned the key in the lock, a sense of peace settled within me. The past, with all its pain and lessons, was a foundation, not a prison. Ahead lay endless possibilities, each day an opportunity to create, to love, and to live fully. My eviction, once a moment of despair, had become a cornerstone of a life joyously reclaimed. Now that our story has come to an end, I have a question for you. Do you think Mark deserved his fate, or do you believe everyone deserves a chance at redemption, no matter their past actions? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and let's get a discussion going. And if you enjoyed this story, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more compelling tales. Your support helps us keep bringing these stories to life. Thanks for watching.